Hi friends, David here from Learn Stage Lighting, and in this video we're going to talk all about how to wire an LED wall together, which is exactly why I'm standing in front of a backwards wall. So that we can talk about all about the wiring methods for data, for power, processors, backups, the whole shebang, we're going to cover it here. Let's dive in. So when it comes to LED walls, you know, I could almost answer how in the world to wire them in like a couple seconds, right? I could go, hey, you can zigzag this way, you can zigzag this way, you can zigzag that way. No matter what you do, you pretty much want to zigzag, right? Um, and so, you know, that's the basic level. But to truly think about the best way to wire your LED wall, how to get it done so that it makes sense for you, it does take a little more thought than that. So with LED walls, there's a couple important things to think about uh, when you're designing with them, okay? The first is your pixel limitations, okay? A typical Novastar processor with Ethernet connections to the wall, not the fiber-based ones that are coming, but the Ethernet-based ones, can do 650,000 pixels for each port of the processor. Now here, these are six panels at 2.9. I'm not going to do the math in my head, but it's well within a single port, okay? Uh, within a single port, within a processor, we can have some ports be primaries and some be backups in the case that you might have a bad cable in the back of the wall. Backups are great, but only if you check them from time to time or set up the alerts in the various apps uh, from your processor to alert you when there is an issue. If not, you'll just be living life with one bad cable over the long haul and you'll never know it until two bad cables go and then you have a problem. So that redundancy can be helpful. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. So the first thing you've got, as I mentioned, is your processor. Okay, this is a brand new Novastar KU20. Awesome processors. So much better than the old ones you might be uh, familiar with like the VX4s or VX400s, VX600s, VX1000, Nova Pros etc. Those are all kind of the previous generation that used the Nova LCT software. Um, now we're in the newer generation, we're using the Coex VMP software, and it's a lot more user friendly. That's not the topic of today's video, but it is important to think about when we're wiring the LED wall. Um, essentially, with the Coex software, you can kind of wire up, if we think about data first, you can kind of wire these up in any order you want. Okay? For real! All right, so from your manufacturer, what are you going to have in terms of wiring? Okay, whoever gets you an LED wall should supply within the cost of the wall uh, two types of cables. The first are power cables, right? You're gonna have a mains power cable that goes to a mains power plug in the US, typically Edison, but it could be like an L620 for 208 volt power, um, etc. Okay, so main power cord. And then what else do we have? We're going to have cords between each panels, jumpers, okay? Um, how many panels can you run on a circuit? It depends, right? Depends on the panel, depends on how much power it uses. These DVS Optic 2 panels, um, they use about 170 watts, so I can put 14 of them on a circuit. However, be aware, especially with some of the lower cost LED vendors, that the cables they send you with could be 14 or 16 gauge cables. Um, you're only going to go up to that 20 amps. I would only be comfortable. You can do the math yourself. I'll look up how to do that wattage math for cables. But on 12 gauge, which is what DVS provides with their walls, you can go up to 20 amps all day long and be happy. Okay, sure. Does an LED panel uh, pull its maximum draw like ever? Rarely. But regardless, it's important to be safe about electricity and to always oversize cable as much as you can without going wild. Um, so 12 gauge between each panel is ideal. A lot of those lower cost vendors, again, they're going to give you a 14 or 16 gauge cable. That's another reason why we love the walls from DVS, though we use other brands from time to time um, and we're not opposed to them. Okay. Um, number two cable is you're going to have data cables. Okay. So between each panel, these are an Ethercon base cable. Okay. So it's a RJ45 type cable. Um, that's the plug on it, but it's got an Ethercon style plug, right? A locking plug. And you want that for protection to protect the innards of the plug. 
to make sure they live as long of a life as they can. Okay, so you're gonna get power and data. You're gonna get jumpers, right? And then on the data side, you'll also get a mains data cable, which again, in the case of most good brands, um, they will give you these ones that have the locking plug on one side. That's gonna be your panel side. And then just a regular standard good old RJ45 on the other side. Okay, Cat5e is sufficient for LED walls for 650,000 pixels typically. Um, that's not a problem. And uh, But having that two-sided where one's the locking plug, one's not, eliminates unnecessary adapters, patch cables, things that can go bad, etc. Okay, the ones with DVS I didn't measure, but I believe they sure as heck look like 50-foot cables. They could be 25s. Um, if you need to know, just reach out to us and we'll tell you. Uh, but uh, yeah, because mine's all coiled on the floor there. It might be a 25. Um, regardless, typically plenty. If you need longer, you can buy them. Okay, so wiring. So what we've got to do is zigzag between our panels for both power and data. Do power and data need to follow the same path? No, they don't. However, it tends to make troubleshooting easier if they do, right? Just being able to think, oh, all the cables go the same way. It's also, if you're setting up and tearing down, easier to instruct your labor, right? All the power and the data is all flowing the same way. Just like DMX, if you're a lighting person, uh, you know, the order of power and data chaining doesn't really matter. You can do kinds of weird stuff. It just makes your troubleshooting life more difficult. So uh, the biggest key is, right, not going over your pixel limit on any port, which means typically drawing it out in your software ahead of time uh, with a processor connected. And then um, on the power side, not going over your maximum amount of panels per circuit. Then you'll be good to go. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is just a simple wiring. For a lot of horizontal style screens, it just makes sense to go across one way, down, and across the other, okay? If you're using double size panels, um, check and make sure that you have jumpers that are long enough. Some brands, some manufacturers will give you shorter, still give you the short side to side jumpers with those panels, so watch out for that. Um, DVS, I believe, typically does do the long jumpers with the, the double size panels that are double height, like, like this, a thousand or a meter by a half meter, um, so that you're able to jump vertically if you need to. Okay, so in this case, as I mentioned in the last video, I store my, my jumper cables on the back of the panel. I just plug in the input to the output on both. We're ready to go. You don't have to do that. I understand that can be confusing if you're setting up just with a quick spot check with your eye. So we're gonna come in. This will be our mains power connection here. Actually, with the way these brains sit, we're gonna start here because then I can unplug this, do my mains power, come on over here, nice and simple. Just power across, nice and easy. Nobody's gonna look back here during the show anyways. Come on down. Right. I guess it doesn't really matter um, because now I'm going to go the opposite way. And so, so that's where I can untie my little knots in the cables. So I could do rows individually on power. Oftentimes that can make sense. Sometimes you just want to follow power and data. Kind of depends on the setup and what's easier and how many panels max you can do and whatnot. Um, so this will be my last one. So I'll just disconnect this last jumper, toss it down, boom, data is going to be opposite. With data, I mean, this is networking. These cards are using networking. There isn't really necessary a defined input and output, um, but I do like to stay consistent with the power, right? So that means I'm going to go in here, out, come right along, side to side. Hopefully this is easy for you guys to see or else the illustrious JP, our favorite video editor, he is good, um, will <laughs> we'll put in some arrows or something to make it make sense. Right, so now I'm popping down. I'm gonna go, again, I just like to do input, output, even though I know that means I'm coming in on this side and then I'm coming out on this side. Um, it does technically work though. It strains these cables a little bit. It doesn't matter. But there is just enough slack to make me feel okay about that and sleep well tonight. Last one. Pull my last jumper out. Done. So now I'm wired up. I'm ready to do the mains power. Um, being that, where's my mains power? This is a uh, 
blue power con type plug. Um, as the instructions say, you should plug in this end first, the fixture end first, plug in the wall end second. Okay, um, I may or may not do that here, but that's the correct procedure for that plug. And then I've got um, my processor, so I'm going to plug that end in. I do recommend doing that with the processor off. And then I find my other end of the processor. Whoop, not that one. There it is. And DVS gives you a little yellow one, which is nice. The rest are black, so you know which one's the home run. That's help, helpful. Boom. And then the, you'll have various status lights. Um, these are actually lights slash buttons. No, they're not. Yeah, there's a button in the middle on these. Um, so that you can often pop between some different test modes and stuff. You may or may not ever need those. Um, but when they're all connected together and you turn your processor on, most LED panels have all their lights blink together and that's really key okay so now i'll go ahead and wire up and fire up my processor boom and then once that boots i'll be seeing an image on my screen i can go to my configuration software i can configure it etc so i hope you enjoyed this video and learned about you know hooking up an led wall um, power and data zigzag away truthfully especially with the newer software it doesn't matter too much which way you do it but having some order to it is going to make your troubleshooting life, if you have any issues, much, much easier down the road. Uh, we also mentioned before redundant data. If you do need to do that, just grab yourself an extra mains uh, data cable, which I've got some in here somewhere. It's not unwrapped, so I'm not going to worry about it. You come out of a different port on your processor, come in to the open port at the end of your wall zigzag. Okay. Then those two ports are connected completely. The last thing you have to do is set the backup up in the software, and then you'll be good to go. You can't just plug it in and hope it will work. That's a real bad idea. So if you guys enjoyed this video and you're thinking about using an LED wall in your space, go check out our LED wall calculator over at Learn Stage Lighting Gear. We want to help you get an excellent LED wall that's going to serve you really well for a long time, be high quality, be well warranted and supported but also not break the bank and we look across all the brands to find exactly the right fit which may or may not be the same brand or wall that i have here now, i'm going to be honest about that if that sounds good to you head over to learn stage lighting gear and uh, check that out if you're new to lighting head over to learnstagelighting.com grab our free guide to begin with lighting and if you need to buy anything lights audio video reach out to us Go to LearnStageLightingGear.com, ask for a quote, use our contact. We love to hear from you guys, help you solve the problems, get the right gear, and help you get that personalized price every day. If that sounds good to you, we'll see you on the site. Thanks.